Good afternoon. In my sermon on Sunday, I talked about grace. Grace is the fact that God loves us and accepts us and blesses us out of his own free pleasure. It's not because of anything we've done. It's not about anything about us at all. In fact, God loves us more than we love ourselves. <laughs> and that might be hard to imagine, especially in our current culture. Way back in the 1970s, the baby boomers were nicknamed the me generation because everyone thought the baby boomers focused only upon themselves, that self-fulfillment was more important to the baby boomers than social responsibility. But this assessment hasn't stopped with the boomers. Each generation accuses the next generation of being even more self-focused. Everyone is looking out for themselves. Everyone is looking out for what we want, for what benefits us. Our society is so focused on self-interest that a recent president was even reported to have asked while he was visiting military graves in Arlington Cemetery, I don't get it. What was in it for them? Now, I'm not saying that this actually happened. But the fact we might even think that it could have happened speaks volumes not about that person alone, but about all of us. That's the question we all seem to ask. What's in it for me? So on the surface, it appears as though we are obsessed with self-love. But that is not the case. All of this self-seeking reflects a deep sense that there's something missing in our lives. We keep trying to get more and more for ourselves because we have this sense that I'm not okay. I need all these things. I seek after all these things so that maybe they will help me feel okay about myself. But no matter what I do, no matter what I get, it is never enough. And it's not necessarily because some inflated ego makes us think we deserve so much more, but it's because there is a nagging voice deep inside of us telling us, you're not good enough. So we keep trying to get to the place where we, maybe that voice will start saying, okay, now I'm happy with myself. In other words, we are unable to extend grace to ourselves, and we wear ourselves out trying to convince ourselves that we deserve our own love. God may love us unconditionally, but we're not able to do it for ourselves. In a way, we're each like the younger son in the story of the prodigal son that Jesus told in Luke chapter 15. The son took his share of his father's inheritance and squandered it away until he was destitute. And then he decided to return home. On his way home, the son practiced the speech he was going to say to his father. I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Those are words that perhaps we each on occasion, or maybe all the time, say to ourselves. I am not worthy. Look at all the terrible things I have done. Now, if someone else is accusing you of wrongdoing, maybe you can get away from them so you don't keep hearing them. But when that accusing voice comes from within you, you can never escape those words. I am not worthy. And that is where the good news of grace comes to us. God's love for us is strong enough to make up for the lack of love that we have for ourselves. Let's go back to the story of the prodigal son. When he got home and started to give the speech that he'd practiced, his father interrupted him before he could even finish it. And the father said, it's time to celebrate. My beloved son has come home. Give him the best of everything. And that is how God feels about each of us. God refuses to let us beat ourselves up. When we wallow in self-misery over our faults, our real faults or our imagined faults, God interrupts and says, that's enough. Let's have a party so I can let you know how wonderful I think you are. I want to give you the best of everything. 
I don't know what demons you're struggling with, what guilt you may have over your past, or what shame you may feel about who you are. Perhaps these things weigh you down so heavily you can't even look at yourself in the mirror. I don't know what these things are, and I don't need to. But the truth is, God knows what they are. He knows them better than you even know them yourself. And God's response is not to help you beat yourself up. But instead, he says, I am so glad to have you. Let's throw a party. You deserve the best. So if God, if the maker and ruler of all creation thinks that you're lovable, let me ask you, who are you to disagree with him? Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, you know how hard it is at times for us to love and accept ourselves. And you see the great lengths that we go to in order to try to feel good about ourselves. When the truth really is, we only discover our true self-worth when we come to you. It is when we see ourselves reflected in your grace that is when we only truly recognize who we actually are. So send us your grace, Lord. Your grace not only to let us know that you love us, but your grace to let us know that we can love ourselves. And for that, we give you our eternal thanks and gratitude through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.